So I recently encountered a problem that should have been easily avoided. On my latest Arduino project, I ordered the PCB to solder together a prototype. And you might notice down here, I forgot to switch these pads for an SMT over to holes, just regular holes on a PCB that I can solder by hand. And I'm very doubtful that I could get that I could can successfully solder a couple resistors in there. And I thought, well, that's a problem that should have been easily avoided uh, with better inspection. So to solve that, I set up a plugin in Blender to just take the Gerber files and, well, a step from the Gerber files, I generate SVG files, which I used in the documentation for my little projects anyway, and use those SVG files to generate a 3D model of a circuit board that I can give it a more thorough inspection before ordering a PCB and avoid uh, problems like that happening again. Because that should have been easily avoided. So let's jump over to a screencast and I'll kind of walk through this little plugin I made. So I put the project here in GitHub, get a little write up about why I did it. Had that obvious mistake lately. And put the readme together and the plugin. And then this text file is kind of important for it. So I'm going to go ahead and download this as a zip folder and just kind of walk through everything. So now here in downloads, I have this file extract all. And in order to make this run, we'll need both of these files. And we will also need some uh, SVG files representing the PCB design. So to do that, I use curb view. And I tend to have these files anyway. That's why I chose to go with those. Let's see if I open. So this is just a software to view a Gerber file. So I have a couple on here somewhere. Um, uh, this has some, so I'll use this one. So there's some Gerber files representing a circuit board. So I'll open those. And this is just a regular viewer. It's made for inspection, but again, it's a 2D design. And like I pointed out in the intro, it's really easy to miss stuff in the 2D design here. And on the documentation for these, I always include the SVG files in the web page documenting the project. So to do that, for this project, we'll need the board outline to so turn off all the layers and leave on just the board outline and export that as an SVG somewhere. I'll use, I'll just put it here in this same folder that'll make it easy to find. And the name, naming is kind of important. I plan to write a script that uses names at some point. So, oh, that's not bottom layer. This is board underscore outline dot SVG. So the plugin will look for things with these specific names. So go ahead and export that. And then the rest of the layers turn on one at a time unless they go together and include the board outline because when uh, an SVG is imported to Blender it uses the bottom leftmost vertex to position it so it's kind of important to align everything to have that the board outline on all the stuff that way the bottom most left bottom leftmost vertex is the same on every single one so with the bottom layer Selected, export that as SVG, uh, call it bottom layer dot SVG. Then the bottom solder mat, 
solder mask, export SVG, bottom underscore solder dot SVG. The drill holes, I have two layers of drill holes here. Uh, so I'm, I'll turn them both on together with the board outline. Export SVG. It's drill underscore holes dot SVG. And that's important because that's going to be, that's going to create the tool that drills the holes in the board. File export the top layer. Layer dot SVG. I'm guessing right now you probably picked up on that naming convention I used. The silk screen labeling what all those holes are. Export SVG. The silk underscore screen dot SVG. And finally the top solder. Export SVG top underscore solder dot SVG. So now if I get that out of the way, come back in File Explorer. That was in this folder, I believe, in here. Yes, this is where I put all those SVG files. And we'll also need that text file that was downloaded from GitHub, the source there in GitHub, and I'll put the link to that in the comments to the video for this. I was going to copy both of these. So we need the file names and the PCB, obviously the license and readme. If you want to read those, I'll copy those over to the same folder and I'll just work out of this one. So I can close that. And now we're ready to go in Blender, install this plugin here, and then we'll just generate the PCB from all of these files. So I forgot to open Blender before starting this video, and there's no need to watch me do that. So I'm going to pause the screencast for a moment and just open Blender. Okay, so now that the files are set up, that is the bulk of the work for this. Uh, like I said, I already have I use these type of files because I already have them. I found it's a quick and easy way to basically put a viewer like this in the web page documentation and just kind of bring in the SVG stuff and put in some HTML buttons to hide or turn them on and basically put a viewer like this into the web page documentation. I found that's a quick and easy way. So I already have these files. And once those are set up, there's a tech we need a text file that tells the plugin what the names are and I included that so it's set to go with these uh, these names what well, we just kind of walked through there and the last thing we'll need when we install it in the import PCB thing is the ID the blender refers to it as which is this right here PCB dot import underscore SVG so that's the ID that Blender will use to refer to it. I will need that to set it up to a keypress because I didn't assign it to any menus or anything yet. And I might be going, seem to be going through this off quick. Uh, I kind of made the assumption here that if somebody's looking at generating a 3D model of a PCB board before or for inspecting it, before ordering it, you kind of have a good knowledge of modern electronics. So things like GitHub, you, I assume you're familiar with. So I've been doing most of my cat, my uh, any modeling stuff in Blender lately. Uh, so I'm just going to open a new file here and get rid of this default stuff. I always like to toggle through and find the select tool I like to get rid of that stuff. And now we just need to install that plugin and run it. The naming the files was kind of the hard part. So under preferences, edit, then preferences, get to this, and from add-ons, we can install a new add-on. Just navigate to where that file saved. And download from GitHub is this import underscore PCB dot PY, the PY file. So install that, and click the little checkbox to activate it. And 
it's not assigned to any menus or anything, so we need to put it to some sort of shortcut. So do that. If you're not familiar with how to do that, under key map, over here, 3D view, that refers to all the things about the 3D viewport, in object mode. I'll just use that. 3D viewport, object mode, object mode global, has all the key presses and mouse shortcuts. So we just need to assign it somewhere. I'll scroll to the bottom of the list, hit add new. And the new thing we're gonna add is that ID that I just pointed out. So pcb.import underscore svg. So we can tell Blender to run the thing with that ID. And uh, I'll put it on a mouse. Control, shift, left click is open. That's when I know it's open. So, Control Shift Left Click will run the, that plugin. So close this, then go Control Shift Left Click, and it opens the file browser. So just navigate to where the those SVG files are, and just into the, go into the folder where they're at. Make sure the file names.txt is in the same folder as all the SVG files, and then hit import. And it does take a moment because it does an awful lot. It's a really, it's probably the longest script I've ever wrote. But I was really proud of it. That's part of the reason I wanted to share this video. It's like, oh, they came out good, and it'll be incredibly useful. So allow for better inspection of boards before order, before placing in order. You can see it generated two boards. So the first one, this one that said that the origin moved to the origin here, that's just a single piece. So to throw it into the model, a single complete piece. It also gen generates this one. This is what it did along the way. So I just left it in here with everything in separate layers. So you can turn the layers on and off and make thorough inspections uh, on any potential shorts. This one in particular, there's nothing too close. That's about the closest anything got. But I can see clearly from the 3D model, there's not going to be a short there. And like that problem I pointed out at the beginning that led to me making this thing, I can see I did get holes everywhere and didn't leave any SMT pads in the in the model for the prototype. So that's basically the plugin. Uh, I had the need that it would be useful and figured I'm probably not the only person that had such a need. So I thought I'd share it there. And the big deal with my plugin here is setting up those file names, which I already had anyway. That's why I use those. Though in the future, I might go ahead and just uh, take the machine vector information from the Gerber file, the vectors that feed into the machine directly, and write a script that does all the, that does all this from those files instead of the SVG. But again, I had those anyway. They're useful things to have because it's a quick, easy way to get stuff in web page documentation. Hopefully some of y'all might find that useful. Uh, I at least wanted to share it. I was really proud of it. Thank you.